Welcome back, Camden Catholic. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to wrap up the last little stuff about the Renaissance, right? And then we are going to talk about exactly what's going to be on your exam. So let's make sure we're doing this all the way through just because it's your last kind of like homework grade before, uh, ugh, God, it's like window light is weird. Um, it's the last like a little homework grade you have before all the final grades go in. So just to give you a heads up, the project and the essay grade will be on this quarter because they're going to be in, there's going to be another project, some other stuff that's going to go on the next one. So, first and foremost, we started talking about this in class already. Sorry, I'm also watching a basketball game. But uh, we started talking about this in class on... Okay. Uh, we started talking about this in class Friday. We talked about how the Renaissance is going to spread northward, right? So the Renaissance is going to spread north, and the Renaissance is going to spread north through trade, particularly, right? Many artists are going to be persecuted for their work and also run to the northern areas, like da Vinci himself. That's why he ended up dying in France, right? So I'll tell you a story that's really weird about that, if I ever get a chance, about how, like, the Fran France is the first king of France, like, sucked in the last dying breath of da Vinci, according to a painting, anyway. Uh, but, so let's keep going, though. And this is also going to be helped out. The spread of Northwark Renaissance artwork is going to be yeah, is going to be helped out due to this major invention, and it's going to be called the printing press, right? So the printing revolution is going to come around. So the printing revolution all has to do with this guy named Johannes Gutenberg. Even though it's not really his design as much as it's an adaptation of a Chinese design. So had he not invented this metal type printing press. There's a possibility that somebody else would have been eventually anyway. So the printing press, though, is going to print things like the Bible, right? It's going to be the very first time the Bible's ever been printed. It's going to cause it to be the very first book to ever be printed. And books are, printed books are going to be cheaper. So cheaper books means that you have an easier access to literature. It means that you have an easier access to reading materials in general. So literacy rates are going to go through the roof, right? And so right here, this is a printing press itself. So the big difference between Gutenberg's design and that of the Chinese, though, is that his was metal type, all right? So type or A type is a small metal letter, right? And they would lay those things in one at a time to create like a page of a book, right? And then they would actually go wham, and they would just pull the press down and stamp a page on there, right? And that's how they would actually create books. And that's also why you call it typing, as in typing on a computer, because it's each type, as in each letter has its own key. So anyway, but it's very a lot of very neat stuff. It also has to do with a lot of the different stuff like uh, muslin paper design and things like that. But northern artists in particular are going to depict what they call real people. They're going to depict the poor. They're going to depict merchants, wealthy, everybody, all right? They're going to depict all of them in immense detail as well. Whereas Italian artists focused a lot on, uh, not only do they focus on uh, rich and wealthy people that could pay for it, they also focused on things like the church. And mainly just because the church was paying for most of these artworks, right? So... The big thing about Northern artists, though, is right here. Immense detail. Also write this down, less use of color, all right? So artists, Northern artists didn't use as much color or the color palette or bright colors as the Italian artists did, right? So we talked about some of those guys already. One of them we talked about already is Albrecht Dürer, right? So some of you had the rhino or whatever. Do not write any of this stuff down. Only write the part that says engraving, all right? So engraving is going to be how they take the printing press and turn it into an art form, right? So... Artists are going to cut designs into metal plates or wood cuts or wood pieces of wood with acid. And they're going to use this thing right here, right? So that stylus is going to cut in there. And then what's going to happen, though, is they're going to lay ink over top of the engraving and then print it onto each piece of paper. And so they can make tons and tons of these and make them much cheaper. But also it gave uh, illustrations to books for the very first time, which is a really cool thing. So the engraving. Engraving is very, very neat. Um, so... That is Albert Durer himself. Then Jan von Eck is another example of a Northern Renaissance artist. We talked about his Arnolfini portrait, right, with the crazy mirror in the background. Lastly, though, we have a couple of Northern philosophers and writers. William Shakespeare himself is considered to be a Northern writer, all right? Kind of like your Machiavellis, but in the North, okay? So he is a playwright, focuses on very realistic characters as well as historical characters as well. So he actually wrote an entire play about Caesar. 
Um, Sir Thomas More is also going to be a big-time Northern Renaissance artist. He writes this book called The Utopia. And The Utopia is kind of a criticism of the Catholic Church and saying that money and uh, wealth and greed are going to be the ultimate downfalls of humankind and stuff like that. Get it together! All right, so, sorry. Caroline's tied up right now, and they need to beat Georgia Tech. Um, anyway, so a lot of different things like that, right? So that is going to be it for the Renaissance stuff. We'll review that stuff a little bit. There we go. So we'll review that stuff a little bit later on, but let's go ahead and talk about what the exam is going to look like, all right? So let's hop over here to this document. So I'm going to show you real quick what your exam is going to look like. So first and foremost, um, what should you study, all right? You should study your study guides, okay? You have study guides on the following things. You've got one on ancient sieves and Greece. You have another one on Rome. You have another one on the Middle Ages. And then you have a last one on the Renaissance that I gave out in class, okay? So anyway, those are your study guides. And then the setup of the exam looks like this. So the exam, or excuse me, the midterm, the MT, is the, excuse me, it is gonna be 75 multiple choice, okay? So now that's gonna be coming from all of your study guide stuff. And then it's gonna be, let me think. 25, fill in the blanks. And unfortunately, this pains me to do this, but I have to because it has to be done on a Scantron. There will be... Ugh, there will be a word bank, unfortunately, all right? So, there will be a word bank. And then your last 12 are going to be your artworks, all right? So, the artworks that we've done in class. All you have to do for that is identify the artist title, and one fact. So it's not that hard, okay? It's very, very simple. You're not being asked to remember like specific people and things they did just out of blue, thin air with no word bank help, right? You have a piece of artwork. All you gotta do is tell me who did it, what's called, one fact about it, that's it, okay? So, and then the last one is gonna be a 10, one, 10 sentence essay, all right? So the 10 sentence essay, is gonna be pertaining to, you're gonna be given several options and you pick which one you wanna do, all right? So it's gonna be graded more for completion than anything else, completion and content, not necessarily just like the tiniest little nitpicky things, okay? So you just need to make sure you do it and you try to do it your best, okay? Do not leave it blank because it is going to crush you if you leave it blank. Do not write under 10 sentences because it will hurt you if you write under 10 sentences. Last thing, when you're writing 10 sentences, don't give me five sentences of garbage. Give me some good, solid stuff. Got it? Okay, that's how your midterm's gonna look like. This is what you should be studying. I will have copies of the old study guides in class tomorrow, but the thing about all this is you shouldn't have lost them in the first place, all right? I gave these to you in the first place. I made them for you in the first place. Do not throw away study materials, okay? So, but bang, that is exactly what your midterm's gonna look like, all right? so. Hope you all enjoy it. Um, go ahead and start studying, I would suggest. We're going to have Monday to review, okay? And yeah, so get cracking. I'll check this flip then. We'll finish up our last artwork. We'll play a review game. We'll have a good time. And that's about it. So I hope you all enjoy the rest of your weekend. Go birds. Go Irish. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, Canada Catholic.